If you are someone who finds yourself often roaming through the online spiritual community, whether it be on YouTube or on Instagram or Tumblr, Pinterest, whatever platform that you prefer, you find yourself constantly in that space, like that online space of the spiritual community. Energy integration is something that you'll likely hear very often, along with other words like downloads, codes, new frequencies, things of that nature are very common words in the online spiritual community and I know that they're used quite often but I don't know that they're very openly spoken about in terms of what all of that means and how all of that works and how it may look specifically for you and how you can really allow all of those energies to come in and how to integrate them. So it's a word that's always said, but if you don't really know how to do that, then the hearing that word means nothing. So in this video, I do want to talk about some of my personal tips and things that I've learned along the way in terms of integrating energy and how I do it. So yeah, I will go ahead and get into my thoughts. And disclaimer, everything in this video is completely my opinion based on my experience and my knowledge. So if it doesn't resonate, don't don't take it i always say only receive what resonates and that goes for this entire video so in my channel messages that i do on instagram i talk about when new energy is coming in a lot because usually i can feel it when i'm channeling when i'm meditating i feel when there's an influx of new energy that's coming in and i usually talk about how that energy is going to be integrating what some of the ascension symptoms can look like for people and what new energy means to me is a consciousness shift. So to me, new energy means a consciousness shift is coming. So in my personal experience, whenever I know that there is new energy that's coming in for me, I know that essentially what that means is that there is a shift in perspective that is approaching. So the way that I had been doing things, the way that I had been thinking about things, the way that I had felt on a day-to-day -day basis, I know because of the influx of energy that all of that is going to shift. Do I know specifically how it's going to shift? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But overall, I know that it's basically a shift in my energy, in my consciousness, in my perspective that is about to take place. And so I'll say it again, whenever I am talking about new energy coming in, and for the most part, when you're listening to any channeler and they're talking about new energy that's coming in for you, that's, to me, that's basically what that means, that a consciousness shift is approaching. And so when we go through these consciousness shifts, they're basically upgrades, they're basically ascensions. And these are completely dependent on you, your personal journey, your experience, how much you've learned, how much you've grown, how much shadow work you've done, how much you've learned about your true self. It all really is dependent on your own spiritual journey in terms of what it looks like for you, the consciousness shift. But overall, there will be certain, how do I say, signs that I can kind of tap into when it comes to myself and my own journey where I realize, okay, a consciousness shift is coming. And this is where the term ascension symptoms comes into play. So you'll hear things like crown chakra activity, um, certain chakra activity, whether it be throat, heart space, root, etc. You'll hear that very often. Sometimes you'll hear kundalini activations. Sometimes you'll hear energetic purging, a lot of crying, reflecting. It all varies from person to person, but for me personally, I think I can always know when some new energy is coming in for me because I experience a lot of crown chakra activity um, because of what I do. It always sounds so weird to say stuff like this out loud, but because I am a energy channeler, a lot of the energy that I channel comes through, obviously my crown and my third eye space. So whenever an ascension is about to take place or whenever a consciousness shift is about to take place in my personal journey, I kind of realize it because there will be a lot of stuff happening um, in my headspace. And it's not a headache. Uh, what I feel is not a headache. Sometimes it is, but most of the time it's not. Most of the time it's just this weird... It feels like someone's poking around in my brain. That's the best way to describe it. And so I get really light sensitive. Um, sound sensitive at times my ears will be ringing that is another symptom that people talk about quite often when it comes to energetic upgrades 
I can get restlessness. I know that when my sleep starts getting fucked up that something is off and like something is being brought to my attention because I usually sleep very well and my dreams are usually very vivid all the time ever since I was a child. So I know when that changes at some point that usually it's pointing me in the direction of something is either trying to come up within me or something is being input into my consciousness that's causing my body to kind of be thrown out of balance. And so my first tip leading into my first tip of how to recognize when a consciousness shift is approaching for you is to learn your personal symptoms. So if you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you've been on your spiritual journey for a while. And even if you have just started to remember and you are now starting to come into yourself and into your spirituality, I think we all kind of know when something is off, like I said. So we know how our body feels on a day-to-day -day basis. We know how our internal space feels on a day-to-day -day basis, how our head space feels, and we get comfortable in how our physical vessel and how our internal space feels. And so when something within our internal space changes, we take note of it. When something in our physical body starts aching when it didn't the other day, we notice it, we take note of it. And so, as I said, my first tip is to learn your personal ascension symptoms. So when you are tapped into all of these different spiritual communities online and you're learning about astrological placements and energy and you're just you're diving headfirst into all of the information that you could possibly receive in terms of what's happening energetically in this realm, pay attention to how you feel. So recently we had the 1221 portal that was very potent for a lot of people. A lot of people experienced first wave awakenings, meaning that a lot of people started to remember. And we also experienced a lot of ascension and upgrades for people who have been on their spiritual journeys for years, months at a time. Again, it varied on where you are in your current spiritual journey. But that was a very potent energetic portal for the entire collective consciousness. And so hop back to how you felt starting on the 12th of December to the 21st. Go back into your mental archive and ask yourself, how did you feel during that time period, during that stretch of time? Were you more tired than usual? Were you more hungry than usual? Were you less hungry than usual? Were you drinking a lot of water or were you drinking a little bit of water? What did you feel called to do? Did you feel called to paint, to write, to, to meditate more, to take baths? Did certain connections fall away and no longer resonate with you? Did something new start resonating with you? And so those are questions that you should be asking yourself when these really significant energetic portal dates are happening or just in general when channelers are talking about an influx of energy coming in so you can better understand some of your personal symptoms so whenever these symptoms arise again you know okay there's an ascension that's happening right now like i'm moving into a different energy at this moment in time and i need to honor how i feel so i can fully integrate this energy so i want to break down a little bit more what exactly i mean by consciousness shift before we go into the rest of my tips. So when I say consciousness shift, I feel like in the spiritual community, there's a lot of jargon that is kind of hard to read. It's hard to understand. And when you're first coming into your spiritual journey and you're really starting to remember and come into your own awareness of this realm and self and your spirit guides, etc., when you're first starting to come into that, a lot of the spiritual jargon that's used is difficult to understand. It's not put in plain terms. So as I said, you may be hearing ascension symptom often, but you're like, what the, f what is an ascension symptom? Like you're not getting the proper explanations or you're hearing energy integration quite often, but you're like, I don't even know how to use integrate in that context. So I don't know what you mean, right? So when I say consciousness shift, what I mean, and I kind of briefly touched on this, but I kind of want to dive a little bit deeper into it. So. I make sure that it really makes sense when you're watching this. Your consciousness is your awareness, right? So when you are meditating and you are watching your thoughts pass in your mental space, when you are really just sitting in stillness and being with your breath and spending that time to do nothing because in this life, in this room, we are always consumed with doing something. So when you are really in that stillness and you are allowing yourself the space to think, feel, anything for whatever needs to come up to come up you are in a sense witnessing your consciousness 
every day, every second of every day, you are witnessing your own consciousness when you walk, when you talk, when you eat, when you drink water, when you meditate, when you channel, when you do whatever, you are always witnessing your own consciousness. And so where you currently are right now. So after the 1221 portal, say that a whole bunch of new ideas came in for you. Say that a new project idea came in to your awareness. Say that you met some people, you met some new souls and your soul family is coming in. Say that something that you had been holding on to for a very long time has now been released. That is an example of a consciousness shift. So the energetic awareness of yourself that you had prior to the 1221 portal no longer exists because it has shifted. So you were doing that, but now after that influx of energy has come in for you, you now are prompted to do this. You now feel called to do this. And so really a consciousness shift, in my opinion, is that simple. When you are fully aware of yourself, when you are aware of your spiritual nature and the spiritual reality that is everything that you experience, and you are tapped into frequencies of higher consciousness, meaning that you have a thirst for wanting to learn, wanting to grow, wanting to expand, when you feel these promptings from something you were doing to something that is new, that is a consciousness shift. Whether it is big, whether it is small, it is still a shift in your consciousness that you know because you're tapped in is going to lead ultimately to where you are called to be next. So that's what I mean when I say consciousness shift. You just start noticing new shit that's coming in for you. You start noticing that you may not feel the same about something that you did two days ago. You may feel like you have this surge of energy that's coming up within you, this surge of motivation, this surge of power. You may realize that certain spiritual gifts are coming in for you, which I will make a separate video about. But you may notice that certain abilities that weren't there before have now come online for you, that you're starting to see more, hear more, feel more. And that is, again, as I said, an example of a consciousness shift. It is a shift from one way of being to another. And so I'm making this video of how to integrate this energy because I feel like <laughs> during the 1221 portal, so for me personally, I started feeling the energy of that portal at the beginning of December. There was a lot coming in and I felt that, as I said, from December 1st. Like I knew going into December that December was going to be a very significant month for the entire collective consciousness. But I feel like an energy that I kept tapping into when I was channeling for either Instagram or for the channel check-ins that I do on my YouTube page, I felt like I was constantly tapping into an energy of, <laughs> okay, so this energy is coming in, but... I'm not really going to do anything with it or I don't know what to do with it because what am I supposed to do here? So like everyone is talking about this influx of energy, but like how do I know that I'm experiencing that same influx? How do I know that I'm integrating it the way people are talking about, you know, themselves integrating it? I don't know. So there was just this energy that I kept tapping into of uncertainty and that prompted me to make this video because I feel like part of the reason why I want to make videos in the first place that are like this is because I remember when I first started remembering I was I was around 12 13 years old when I first started remembering and thankfully I did have a family member who was going through their remembering process at the same time as me so we were able to lean on each other but not everyone has that. And I know that even then with a family member that I had, there were certain experiences that I had that I didn't know what the fuck they were. And because she didn't have any experience with it either, she didn't know either. So I feel prompted to make videos like these because they're videos that I personally wish I had had when I had first started remembering and started learning all of the spiritual terms that are used so commonly in the spiritual community. So that is why I'm making this video. and. Now that we have gone over <laughs> what I personally feel like a consciousness shift is and the first step in my opinion, which is learning your personal ascension symptoms, some of my other tips that I have, and I think the one that is probably most important because I did mention social media platforms, is that when you're online in these spiritual communities and you're 
listening to and exchanging energy with all of these different kinds of people with different backgrounds and different experiences who are on their own personal spiritual journeys and at different stages than you are that if something doesn't resonate don't take it just like i said at the beginning of this video i always say in my channeled messages on instagram only receive what resonates and that was something that i didn't quite fully understand when i had first started my spiritual journey i feel like i was just kind of like a sponge for everything and so when i was really in that stage of like wanting to know and i was wanting to understand and i was thirsting for all of this different knowledge because i had started to realize that the reality that i thought i knew was not actually reality. I was putting myself in so many different energetic spaces online to try to get as much information and understanding as I could. But what I didn't know at the time was that when something doesn't resonate with me, to not take that message, to not take that opinion, and to not take that perspective. And so I feel like for a while, I had so many different conflicting perspectives in my mind that weren't even mine like i wasn't even fully tapped into what i thought and to my intuition yet so i was just accepting everything that these spiritual gurus and like spiritual people who are really well known in the community i was taking everything they were saying at face value without asking myself like does that actually resonate with you like do you feel that or are you just hearing it and so that is my message for you when it comes to integrating the new energy that is coming in for you at any given moment in time is when you're seeing all this stuff online ask yourself if it resonates does it feel good in your soul do you feel it in your spirit or is it just something that is going in one ear and kind of sticking to your brain rather than flowing out of the other because even people who have however many followers even people who have a really reputable reputation when it comes to channeling energy or having a very well-known perspective in the spiritual community just because they have that does not mean that everything they say is going to resonate with you so just a simple reminder for you to always know going forward when you are integrating energy is that if it doesn't resonate it's not aligned it's that simple Anything that resonates with you and you know you feel it in your spirit and you know on an intuitive level that what that individual is saying is true for you, that means that that message is aligned with you at that current moment in time. If it doesn't resonate, it's not aligned and you let it fly. <laughs> so don't take everything online at face value, basically. And I don't know if I wrote this down in my notes, but to kind of go along with that, when you are integrating energy, like when you feel it, when you have started to feel your ascension symptoms, when you've started to realize that there is energetic stuff coming up within you, you may be energetically purging, when you realize that there's some healing that may need to take place for this energy to come in, when you start to realize that your consciousness is shifting, I recommend hermiting. <laughs> And like I said, I don't think I wrote that down, but I am going to say it because it is something that I do. When I feel, you know, the influx of energy that's coming in and I feel like, okay, I'm about to upgrade, I pretty much close myself off. Not necessarily physically, but definitely energetically. It's like I put up this cocoon around myself to protect my energy and I'm very mindful of what I consume at that time. So I'm very cautious of what I watch, of what I listen to, of who I'm tapped into, of what kind of pages that I'm putting my energy and effort towards on social media. I'm very particular about that when I know that I am integrating new energy because I don't want any outside opinions, any outside energetic interference. I want to fully be in my own energy so I can make sure that this consciousness shift happens, first of all, as smoothly as it can, but also so I can really be in my own space so I know what is coming in for me, so I know what's mine and what is somebody else's. That's my second tip. I wouldn't spend as much time online during that time. Um, if you are a tarot watcher on YouTube, I would say kind of tune out from some of those for a while and really just be in your own energy and see what comes up for you organically without someone else's opinion or perspective. My next tip for energy integration that I personally started doing this year was dream journaling. I mentioned this earlier in the video that I am someone who has always had vivid dreams. Like there are certain dreams that I had when I was like four or five years old that I still remember clearly as if I had the dream last night. 
but I was never really one to record all of my dreams. I was more so just someone who I dreamt what I did and if it felt like there was something significant in it, then I would write it down in my journal because I have always been a journaler. Um, I would write them down in my journal, but in terms of like really keeping track of every dream that I had, I wasn't that person until this year. I think I got prompted to around May and I started a dream journal. And so that is my next tip for energy integration is paying attention to your dreams. I could make an entirely separate video of what exactly I think the dream space is and like what I think is happening when we are in that state. Um, yeah, that's a separate video. But the dream space, as I have learned, is a very potent space for messages to be delivered to you because you're, it, it's not your waking life, right? So there's no ego to get through. There's no human mind or human conceptualization to get through for the divine to deliver messages to you. You are completely open and receptive to energy at that moment in time. And so in my opinion, I feel like it's much easier for your spirit guides, your ancestors, higher dimensional beings, etc., to deliver messages to you that are needed. Because as I said, there aren't any human barriers there. So when you first have the dream, you may wake from it and be like, the fuck was that like <laughs> that was crazy that didn't make any sense but then if you write it down maybe two weeks later maybe three weeks later maybe a month later you look back over that dream and you reread what you wrote and you start to see like symbolism of things that have happened prophetic messages signs that turned out to be really significant and you have this ability to reflect over how much the divine actually communicates to you in the dream space and so when there are influxes of energy that are coming into you, when you are experiencing a consciousness shift, in my personal experience, my dreams get a bit more vivid. They get a bit more prophetic. They become a bit more realistic as if I'm, again, separate video, but I'm not dreaming, but I'm actually in a completely different space altogether and I'm experiencing something there. So pay attention to your dreams, pay attention to the signs, the animals, the messages, what people say to you in them. And as I said, there may be those messages and signs and hints that were really important to the new energy that's coming in for you. And you'll be able to look back over it and realize it. The next tip that I have, I briefly mentioned this a second ago, is journaling slash reflecting. <laughs> I have said in a podcast episode, I don't remember which one, but um, I have said in a podcast episode that I know that everyone's not a journaler. Not everyone enjoys writing their thoughts down. That's not something that resonates with everyone. But I do recommend some sort of reflective process when you are integrating energy. Some people enjoy walking. Some people enjoy exercising. Some people enjoy meditating. Some people enjoy journaling. Some people in another form of journaling, which I have done and I think I also mentioned in the podcast episode is recording a voice note. Like if you don't feel like writing something down, just talk out your feelings. If you feel like there isn't anyone in your external reality that you can communicate stuff like that to, pull out your phone, turn on the voice recorder and just say whatever it is that's on your mind at the moment. There are so many different ways that we can really spend time with our own emotions and reflect on everything that's going on internally. And it's just a matter of finding what way really resonates with you and helps you be the most reflective and in the most state of receptiveness to your own emotions. Similar to the dream recording, I feel like journaling allows you to look back. It allows you to ask yourself, okay, how do I feel? What do I feel like is coming in for me? What do I feel like is being released? What do I feel like is coming up for healing? It allows you the space to really talk about everything that you're feeling. I have said previously, whether in a video or a podcast episode, I can't remember at this point, but I have said before that your feelings essentially are the pathway to your soul. So however you feel at that moment in time when you feel like you're experiencing an influx of energy is a reflection of some soul work that either may be done in the future, needs to be done now, or may indicate what next steps your soul is going in. And my final tip, I guess, goes along with all of these. So we had dream recording and we had journaling, whatever that means to you personally. But then also, of course, as always, meditation. And I know meditation is something that people 
what's the word? I think they find intimidating on a certain level, especially when they're first starting to come into their spiritual journey. So again, that could be a separate video of how I began meditating and how I got to the point where I am now of channeling. But meditation really allows, again, it's similar to the dream state when there aren't as many human barriers between you and the divine realm. So a lot of information can come in quicker and easier. And so I really recommend doing grounding meditations when you are integrating new energy and you are feeling these ascension symptoms and you know that a consciousness shift is present for you. Grounding, in my opinion, is so important because, as I said, when I know that I am currently experiencing ascension symptoms, my head, <laughs> there's a lot of activity that goes on in my crown space. So I call it my space cadet <laughs> days. So when I feel like all of the energy is coming in through my crown and third eye space, I know and feel kind of like a balloon. I, I feel like I'm here, but I'm not here. Um, kind of like I am simultaneously in my body and outside of it. And it's a very weird energy to be in, but I notice it when it comes up. And so that's when I really spend time grounding, whether it's through meditation, whether it's through yoga, whether it's through exercise or wearing grounding crystals or just asking my spirit guides like, help me. <laughs> there are so many different ways that I feel like my voice is going out while I'm talking about all of this, but yeah, there are so many different ways that you can ground yourself. I know that self-pleasure and sexual intimacy is something that many people do in terms of grounding themselves. I know that spending time in water can be very grounding for people. So in the most common way, I almost forgot, is spending time outside, being in nature and walking barefoot or pressing, you know, open palm to the earth and just feeling her, you know, and allowing her to remind you of where you are, who you are. <laughs> and like I said, there's so many different ways that you can do this, but whether it be through meditation, which is my most recommended way, because I feel like it allows the energy to come in a lot easier when you're receptive and you're letting your spirit guides know that you're receptive to the energy that's coming in for you. But grounding in whatever way that you possibly can and that best fits you because while this energy is coming in through your crown space or however it comes in for you specifically it needs to be anchored into your physical and energetic vessel meaning that if the energy simply just starts coming in for you and you don't acknowledge it you don't realize you know how it's going to be impacting you you don't you know fully understand where the energy is taking you you can kind of remain that little balloon floating around with all of this new energy and nowhere to really put it or no direction of how you're supposed to integrate it and use it. So that to me is why grounding is so important. So the energy that's coming in can really come through your entire vessel and be anchored down into Earth Ma from you. So for the remainder of this video, I feel like this is going to be one of my longer videos. I have two questions. So the first being, what daily changes can be made to reflect your new perspective and that can be a journal prompt if you want it to be so like what can you do every single day when you are experiencing this ascension this upgrade that you know can help you really integrate this new energy whether that be starting a new routine whether that be meditating more whether that be a ritual a self-love self-care ritual that you implement whether it be removing yourself from certain energetic spaces certain conversations whatever it is just ask yourself what can i do today that will help this energy come in that will be a reflection of the new energy that i feel coming in and also the second question of what big actions and changes can be made to reflect it? So two questions, two sides of the same coin. What can you do daily to reflect the new energy that's coming in for you? And what can you do that's big, that's massive, that is a reflection of the consciousness shift that you are experiencing? And whatever the answer is to those questions is what you should be doing at that moment in time that you are experiencing the upgrade. Because you showing and deciding that you are going to take daily action to reflect the new energy is going to help it flow in. It's going to help the new energy integrate smoother into your reality because you've already started to make changes based on it. So yeah, those are my tips. Again, receive only what resonates. 
And if any of this did resonate, feel free to let me know in the comment section how it did or just drop a like on this video. It lets me know that you want to see more videos like these, more sit down talking that aren't just channel check-ins. And if you would like to purchase a channeled reading for yourself, the links will be in the description, either for an email reading or a video reading. It is your decision. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at livingsetsuna. Link will also be in the description. And I thank you so much for being here and for listening to me. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.